Hey, 42 here. In 2008, an inmate in Colorado, convicted of armed robbery, was released from prison 90 years too early. Due to a clerical error, he couldn't believe his luck and was determined to get his life back on track. He got a job, got married, had kids, went to church every week and started coaching youth soccer. After six years of making the most of his accidental freedom, authorities realized their mistake and sent him back to prison. In America, prison inmates are accidentally released too early, disturbingly often. Also in Colorado, another inmate was mistakenly released four years early. Their story wasn't as pleasant. Whilst out of prison, he killed the state's correction chief when he knocked on the inmate's door. But if an inmate serves their entire sentence or is perhaps let out early for good behavior, what are the chances of them re-offending? Does the prison system actually work? There are currently over 9 million people incarcerated in prisons worldwide. Half of that number is held in just three countries, the US, China and Russia. The US has the most prisoners by far, with over 2.3 million adults behind bars within its borders. America has just 5% of the world's population, but over one quarter of its prison population. So does this mass incarceration work? No, absolutely not. In fact, it does quite the opposite. Prison only creates more crime and more prisoners. It is a completely self-criminizing system. Imagine if I told you I had a fantastic new plan to stop crime. We take all the people that have been naughty and put them into a building where they can't leave and all they can do to keep themselves occupied is talk to all the other criminals and learn. Learn how to commit more complex crimes and get away with them. And plan their next grand criminal escapade once they are released. They may even form coalitions. Crime is even practiced on one another inside prisons in whatever ways possible. Some rise to the top and become kingpins or gang leaders that orchestrate new crimes on the outside from inside prison. Many experts have labeled prisons as crime schools, and it's easy to see why. This is an excerpt from a letter by a UK prisoner called Ben that was entered into a yearly prisoner writing competition. The day I was sent to prison, I learned how to steal cars. Still in shock from the jury's verdict, I was led from the courthouse into a white van. A convict in another compartment was boasting of how he drove off and sold luxury motors, BMWs, Mercedes and the like. He used an electronic device to override their immobilizers. Unseen figures from other compartments called out questions. How long does it take? What models does it work on? How can I get one? I listened, intrigued. I had never stolen anything and I didn't intend to. Then again, it sounded so easy. So then, it's no surprise that the recidivism rate is so high. In the US, almost 70% of prisoners are re-arrested within three years of being released, and 77% are re-arrested within five years. And that's just the people that are caught recommitting crimes. Sure, when it comes to any kind of prison statistics, America is always the worst example, but other countries are not far behind. In the UK, 47% of prisoners re-offend within three years. But there is one country that has broke the mould and has reduced their recidivism rate to just 20%. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Hatred breeds hatred, and violence causes violence. People who have been hurt are the most likely to go on to hurt others. And as long as the prison system is based on violence and hardline punishment, it will continue to create more violence and more crime. The world's leading psychologists have long agreed that confining humans in cages with minimal human interaction and sometimes with no human interaction whatsoever is unimaginably damaging to one's long-term mental health. It creates deep mental wounds, it dehumanizes people and devalues a person's sense of worth, and once you take that away, more crime can seem like the only way forward after release from prison. 
But by far, one of the most damaging effects of prison on both prisoners and society is isolation, especially from family members. Prison tears away a person's support network, and research shows that the number one factor that determines if a person will re-offend or not after release is whether they have support from their family and friends. Prison makes this level of support which is required practically unachievable. But the wounds go even deeper. In America, 2.7 million children have a parent inside prison. Research has shown that when a child loses their mother or father figure to prison with minimal contact, they are many, many times more likely to grow up to commit crime themselves. So not only is prison causing adults to re-offend, it's also preparing the next generation to be criminals too. So what's the answer? It's very well saying that prison doesn't work, but surely the only real alternative that doesn't violate every human rights law is allowing murderers, rapists and other criminals to roam the streets. Or is it? Remember earlier I mentioned that there is a country where the re-offending rate is just 20%? Well, what if I also told you that this mystical place also has one of the lowest incarceration rates in the world? They have put only 70 out of every 100,000 of their citizens behind bars, compared to the world's leading incarcerator America, which has put 716 of every 100,000 of their citizens in prison, over 10 times as many. Welcome to a magical land called Norway, where the air is clean, the food is pickled and the streets are ridiculously safe. Norway is officially the sixth safest country in the world, according to the Legati and Prosperity Index of 2016. Joining the ranks of other Scandinavian countries and places like Singapore and Japan. Sure, Norway has had its upsets in recent years, but overall it's still one of the safest places to live. But how can this be when they incarcerate such a tiny percentage of their population? Surely, the only way to keep the public safe is to lock up all the criminals for life so that they can't commit any more crimes. Well, that makes sense in theory, but the most important factor is what happens after a prisoner is released. You see, there isn't a constant supply of new criminals. It's estimated that only 15% of the population of any country will ever commit a crime during their lives. And the vast majority of major crimes that are worthy of prison time are committed by an even smaller group of constant re-offenders, in most countries at least. So then, it makes sense that if you reform that tiny pool of people that are continually committing crimes over and over again by turning them into fully functioning upstanding members of society, then the prison population will naturally decrease along with the crime rate instead of increasing every year as it has in America. And that is exactly how Norway has created one of the safest countries in the world and achieved one of the lowest prison populations by mastering the art of rehabilitation. In fact, Norway's rehabilitation methods have been so successful that their prison population is falling every year and so is crime, whilst the rest of the world is busy building more and more prisons. But their method of rehabilitation is quite unusual. Unlike in most developed countries, the prison authorities don't sit you in a white room and have a patronising conversation with you about how you will manage on the outside. They don't make you absolutely promise that you'll get a job and not shoot anyone. What they do is actually refreshingly simple and obvious. They treat you like a normal person. This may seem unfair, after all, these are criminals, not puppies we're talking about. But when you think about it, why shouldn't criminals be treated like normal people and given proper accommodation, jobs and social lives? They may have messed up, but your basic human needs don't suddenly change when you get sentenced. And to strip away the essential things that make you human only serves to cause further mental damage to a person increasing the likelihood of them committing violent crime in the future. Welcome to Holden, a maximum security prison in Norway that houses the country's most violent criminals. All inmates are treated the same, no matter their crime. There is no pointless and damaging solitary confinement. 
This is an inmate's cell. It's nice and roomy, they all have unrestricted windows to the outside, with lush views of greenery and forests, and plenty of natural light. And it's all theirs, they don't have to share it with anyone. There's a flat screen TV in every room, private shower, mini fridge and other luxuries. I've definitely stayed in worse hotel rooms. There's a cookery school where all inmates are taught how to cook for themselves, a shop and kitchen so inmates can buy their own ingredients and make their own meals or cook for their prison buddies. And yes, there are plenty of sharp knives lying around. Prisoners are free to leave their cells at any time and enjoy the prison's various facilities, such as a gym, sports hall with a rock climbing wall, outdoor sports field, music studio, where inmates are encouraged to make music that is often played by local radio stations, a woodworking studio, a library with CDs, DVDs and games. Not only are prisoners encouraged to spend time outside their cells, but they are actually paid to do so. Prisoners are given an incentive of 53 krona or $7 per day to leave their cells and socialise. All inmates are offered the opportunity of education and paid jobs within the prison. Nobody has ever tried to escape from Holden Prison. And incidents of violence are extremely rare. Norway is a vast, beautiful country and in Norway taking away a person's freedom is considered enough of a punishment in itself for any crime. So instead of spending a person's entire prison sentence punishing them further, Norwegian prisons focus solely on rehabilitation and integration within society to try and repair the mental damage that may have caused them to commit the crime in the first place. This may be too progressive for some people, and it does raise an ethical concern. Is it right and just that a person who potentially murdered a friend or family member of yours should be treated as though there is a five star retreat, at the cost of the taxpayers nonetheless? But when viewed pragmatically, it makes a lot of sense. This prison has achieved an incredibly low recidivism rate of just 20%, the lowest in the world. And this in turn lowers crime rates every year. It's better for society and better for the economy. This is all helped along further by the incredible support a Norwegian ex-prisoner receives after being released. Various agencies give their support and check up on them regularly, making sure they have accommodation, a support network and crucially, a job. Contrary to America, where a criminal record even for a minor offence is a big black mark on your CV and permanent government records, which ensures you will never ever get a proper job again and you can never develop a career for the rest of your life. It goes without saying that if you take away a criminal's chance to get a job, they're probably going to turn to crime to fund themselves. Well, I'll be damned. In Norway, ex-prisoners are also given free healthcare, education and a mandated pension, just like any other citizen. Whilst many around the world have criticised Norway for being too soft on crime, the numbers speak for themselves, with a 20% recidivism rate. Punishment just doesn't work and it doesn't provide a deterrent. Punishment only exacerbates the problem. Many countries have made a compelling case to prove that. Norway has proven that the only way to solve the crime issue is to work with criminals to achieve a better future. And Norway have taken this one huge step further. Holden Prison may seem like a paradise to many people. I mean, most students across the world probably live in worse conditions. But there's a prison that's even more luxurious, a place that would give your last holiday abroad a run for its money. Welcome to Bastoy Island, Norway. A beautiful, secluded island, lush with forests and fauna, with some of the most idyllic beaches in the world, just 50 miles south of Oslo. But this isn't a five-star holiday resort, this is a prison. Bastoy Island is Norway's minimum security prison and the most luxurious prison in the world. But this isn't where the small time crooks are held. Bastoy is home to murderers, rapists and child molesters. There are no locks, no chains, no cells or razor wire, no walls. Prisoners are free to roam the island at their leisure. 
and enjoy bike rides or go to the beach for a dip in the ocean whenever they feel like it. Prisoners live in shared apartments and everyone has their own private bedroom with a lock and key. Even the prison guards don't have a key to the prisoners' bedrooms. The wooden houses are flush with TVs, computers, musical instruments and other luxuries. Island inmates can take free classes in music, cookery, computer studies, craftsmanship or academia to prepare them for work after their release. They can apply for jobs on the island. Most work on the farm, looking after the animals or using heavy machinery and growing their own food to feed the other islanders. They live within their own ecosystem and the island is fully self-sufficient and sustainable. The island hosts around 120 inmates, with only 5 prison guards keeping watch overnight. Even during the day, the inmates vastly outnumber the prison staff, who say that they have a great relationship with all the inmates, and they are regularly invited inside their homes for coffee and a chat when passing by. One of the previous residents of Bastoy Island was sent here after he chopped up two people with a chainsaw. Whilst on the island, well, he was allowed to work in the forest with a chainsaw. And no. For recreation, there is a sauna, tennis courts, plenty of fishing spots and horseback riding. There is a resident head chef that cooks up restaurant quality dishes for anyone who doesn't want to cook for themselves. Some longer term residents have the freedom to leave the island on boats and go to work at real jobs on the mainland five days a week. No one has ever tried to escape from Bastoy Island. Well, why would you? This is essentially a holiday camp for criminals that many non-criminals would pay good money to stay at. This infuriates many people. Why should we coddle and pamper violent criminals? Well, in the words of head psychologist at Bastoy Prison and its ex-governor Arn Nielsen, if we have created a holiday camp for criminals here, so what? We should reduce the risk of reoffending because if we don't, then what's the point of punishment except for leaning towards the primitive side of humanity? And it's difficult to argue with him when Bastoy Island Prison's reoffender rate is just 16%, even lower than the already impressive Norwegian national average of 20%. The maximum prison sentence in Norway is just 21 years. Even the terrorist Anders Breivik, who in 2011 killed eight people with a van bomb in Oslo, then chillingly shot dead 69 people at a summer camp, was only given a sentence of 21 years. Upon entering the courtroom, the judge shook Breivik's hand and smiled at him, as is customary in Norway. This act and his short sentence was greeted with mass scepticism and disgust by the world's media. He is the biggest challenge Norway's idyllic prison system has ever faced. Will it prove as successful at reforming him as it has many more before him? Only time will tell. Whether you agree with Norway's views on rehabilitation or not, you have to hand it to them. They are doing something right. They have accomplished one of the safest societies in the world without ever really punishing anyone. And when hardline punitive treatment in America and other countries has only made problems far worse and increased violence by both criminals and the authorities year on year, perhaps it is time for the world to pay attention. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click here to support me on Patreon. Not only will you be helping me to make better videos, but you'll also get some really cool rewards like t-shirts and posters every month and you'll get early access to all my videos. Click here to watch another video and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.